Hi, and welcome back to another episode of JPlay. I'm Marcus, and this will be my first real playthrough in the new place, as we are still struggling with some space problems and yeah, some unbox cartons. And for my first playthrough, I decided for The Witches by Martin Wallace, a game that can be played by one to four players, either in a competitive or in a cooperative mode. As I'm playing Eon, as usual, I will go for the co-op variant, but playing with Witch 2, Witch Trainees. I guess this will be a personal learning experience rather than a real playthrough, but I guess the rules seem to be pretty straightforward and nothing compared to other games by Martin like Study in Emerald. Unfortunately, I only got the German version of this game, but as usual, I will try to do my best to translate it for you. This time I even got the English rules, but I really want to apologize in advance for any wrong terms I might be using, and I'm pretty sure you can count on this to happen. The setup only takes some minutes, so here you see the main game board, and as with a study in Emerald, I absolutely love and adore the artwork, which is absolutely fitting into the Discworld universe. I've read a lot of Discworld novels, but I have to admit that I missed this one, and I think it's Witches Abroad. This, this Kingdom Lanker appears in several novels, but I think really the majority of this thing to happen isn't Witches Abroad. I might be wrong, so if you want to let me know, please feel free to do so. So basically I don't have any clue how well this game is aligned with the actual book if it's the actual book. But at least I checked with the Discworld wiki and I learned that the Kingdom Lanker is definitely part of one of those books that I'm referring to and even Esmeralda Weatherwax is also referenced in this board game. Independent of the amount of players you place random and hidden purple heart problem tokens on the spot that show this little purple box symbol here. And you also place 10 green easy problems on spacing with a green box here. Easy problems always will be placed face up as the people of Lanker is gossipy and will chat about these kind of problems basically anywhere and anytime. And who doesn't want to know the latest news about a sick pick? In a two-player game you prepare the problem box as follows. First a number of hidden purple tokens and a number of face-up easy problems. Again, Lanker is chatty. Each player chooses a witch, grabs the appropriate player board and figure. And before you ask, no, this is definitely not a sorting hat. Each witch in training has one special ability which can be used once in the game. Tiffany Aching, for example, here starts the game with the invisibility tile, whereas Anagramma Hawking here gets the magic tile and has to take one cackle counter. Normally you would roll all four dice to determine the starting player, but as I'm playing the game cooperatively and alone, it really doesn't matter, I guess. With just two players and by playing the game in the co-op mode, we start the game with six cackle counters, six black Alice counters and eight crises token. Whenever we have to place a crisis token and cannot do so, we automatically lose the game. The same happens whenever we end a round with at least three elven tokens on the game board. If we end the game by placing the last problem token and if there are less than three hard purple problems on the game board, we actually win the game. But on the other hand, we also lose if we run out of Black Alice tokens and have to draw an additional one. Let's do the final preparations by dealing three cards to each witch, which is also the hand limit by the way. At least at the start of the game, as you can increase this hand limit by solving easy problems. So here are the three cards for Anagramma, here are the three cards for Tiffany. And whenever you have solved two easy problems, you increase your hand limit by one. And as you can see, you are allowed to do this four times. Then each player places his figure on a spot not containing a problem token and then we are actually ready to go. So I would say let's put Tiffany on this spot here and maybe put Anagramma here at the city of Lanker. 
The first thing you do on your turn is that the most trustworthy person draws one card from the draw pile here to determine where to place the first problem. Personally, I wouldn't trust myself, but I have no other choice as I'm playing alone. So let's do that. So we see where we would place our very first problem. And this would be here at the castle Lanker. And for drawing this card, this is the only information that matters for now. So all the other information doesn't matter as it would only tell us where to put the first problem. So we check our problem blocks down here. We always start at the farthest left. So here we would have death. So we would have to place this death problem onto a free spot at Castle Lanker here. They are connected here to the city of Lanker. In this case, we are lucky we can place this tile. If we would not be able to place this tile, then we would have to place our first crisis token. Let's say we start with Anagramma Falcon here. So she can now move zero, one or two spaces. And I'm really happy I found an entry on BGG concerning movement as this is not entirely clear in the rulebook. So here's how you actually move and take action in this game. First you move. That's either zero, one or two spaces. Then you do your follow-up actions. I will explain them in a second. Then you move again. Again zero, one or two spaces. And again you do your follow-up movement. I guess that's really the only downside of some of the Martin Wallace games as the rules are sometimes not very clear. But still, I'm looking forward to Onward to Venus. But thanks again Steve for starting the threat. So I think I will move one space ahead and I will move to one of these problem tiles here. And this is a pregnancy. What kind of a problem is that? Now we come to the follow-up action. In this case, the follow-up action is pretty simple. I have to deal with this problem. Most important information for now is the difficulty of this problem. In this case, that's in this circle here. So the difficulty is a 10, which is okay, I guess. There are problems that are easier. And of course, there are more challenging problems in this game. Now we have to roll our first two dice here. So let's see what we roll. Oh, that's already a 10. So we managed to directly hit our goal. We would now be allowed to play some of those cards. And I think I really should explain you some of those cards now. The card has several purposes in this game. For once, you know where to place an actual problem. I already showed that to you. Then you can play a card for its icon. In this case, that's the Hadology icon, which lets you just add one to your die roll I just showed you. And then there is the possibility to play a card for its special action. In this case, this would allow you to reveal one purple tough problem here. Of course, you always have to decide what to use it for. During the die roll, it's most important to use these symbols. Sometimes these um, special abilities allow it to re-roll a dice or something like that. But I think in most cases you will roll, uh, use them for the actual symbols. So in this case we didn't have to use any cards as we've already reached the difficulty level here of 10. Still we have to roll our second pair of dice because, and here we have it, we might end up with one of these cackle symbols here. And for each cackle symbol, you have to draw one of these cackle counters. And remember, there are only six of these counters in play. And Anagramma here already started with one of those because of her magic ability here. And when you run out of these cackle tokens, then you would have to draw a black Alice token for once in a normal competitive mode this would mean you would lose one victory point but here in this co-op mode this means when you run out of these black alice tokens you also lose the game but in this case we managed to solve the problem here so everything went fine with the pregnancy here so we are now allowed to draw or to take this problem and place it on our player board here and i already explained this to you once you collected two of those you can increase your hand size by one. But we still have our second actions and as I'm feeling lucky, I will move Anagramma to the max problem. Again, I will move up to two spaces, in this case only one, and we'll try 
to heal this broken arm here, which has a difficulty of 11. Again, I have to roll first two dice to determine how many cards I might be using. Okay, in this case, this counts as a zero. I have to take one cackle token for it. And I have five points in total. So that's not even the half of what I need in order to solve this problem. I don't have any cards that would allow me to reroll any of my dice. So I just have to live with it. I have to take the third cackle token already. Now, I can play any number of cards for its symbols and I think I will play my two Hadology symbols here and this would allow me to add two to my result. So now I'm already at seven points. Now I would roll again the remainder of the dice. In this case again an additional cackle token and that's six so it would be enough even without the cards. So I land on a total of 13, which is definitely enough to heal this broken arm here. So for once I'm allowed to take this token. I will place it on my player board. So I already increased my hand size. Still I have to draw one additional cackle token. So we are already down at two available cackle tokens. So I really have to take care of that as soon as possible. One last thing to do is to draw up to your hand limit. We increased that hand limit already. So Anagrammer would be allowed to draw three additional cards. Then we come to Tiffany. Again, her first thing to do would to see where an actual problem would appear. And again, this would be at the city of Lanker. So we take the sick pick here from the problem box and place it on any available space at the city of Lanker. I will just move it down there because really I have to move her somewhere else to get rid of some of those cackle tokens. The purple difficult problem will stay hidden and will also be placed on the board in a hidden fashion. I already showed you there are cards that enable you to reveal those tokens, but they will stay hidden as long as you don't deal with them. So I think let's move Tiffany here to this base here and take care about the sick sheep. The sick sheep has a difficulty of nine, as you can see. Again, we have to roll our first two dice. That's already a seven. I don't have to play any cards because I can roll a nine easily, of course. So I will roll my second set of dice. It's only now to show how many cackle symbols we are about to roll and we are lucky we don't have to deal with any of those cackle counters. So we managed to heal the sick sheep. We take the token and place it on our player board. One thing to notice, you're only allowed to place easy problems in this row. For the difficult problems you have a second row and this works similar to the easy problems. Whenever you gather two of those you can add one to any of your die rolls when rolling for these problems here. This can be pretty helpful. For our second actions I think we have to do some heavy movement now. So we will move one, two spaces down there to try to treat the poor little sick pig down there. That's difficulty of eight, so I guess this shouldn't be really a problem. So let's roll our first die. That's a five. Okay, we can definitely fail here, but I'm feeling lucky today, so I will directly roll my second pair. Oh, and yeah, we are lucky. Remember, these are zeros. So in this case, we managed to roll a nine, which is perfectly fine to heal this sick pick, but still we have to draw a cackle counter as well. Let's draw up to our hand limit. This is Sean Ogg and he allows us to add two to our die roll. Ah, oh, that's perfect. We can play this card after we have rolled all our four dice. That's awesome. Back to Anagramma and draw her card. So we have to place our next problem at the bridge of Lanker. And here we have our first problem as the bridge of Lanka already holds a problem and there can be only one problem at a time. So in this case we have to place our first 
crisis token. And then we have to keep on drawing here. So let's see where this problem can be broken. This is again the city of Lanker. In this case, we are lucky as there are still two slots available here. So we place that on this spot here because really I have to move her out here. And this is fine. This stays hidden as I already mentioned. The first thing to do is really we have to get rid of some of those cackle counters. And the best thing to do with this is to drink a cup of tea. How do you do that? We move one, two spaces on a space with another witch and then we drink tea. For once, the witch who moved and initiated the action is allowed to discard three of the cackle tokens. Which is perfect in this case because she already had four of them, so we remove three. And the other witch is allowed to discard up to two of the cackle tokens, so for Tiffany that's perfectly fine. So we just have five cackle tokens back in our reserve and that's perfectly fine. And as for the second action, I'm really thinking of taking care of this difficult problem here. It is, or the difficulty is increased by two because of this crisis token, but that's a good way to clean up the bridge of Lanker and also to give one of these crisis tokens back to the reserve. And Anagramma really has some good cards as she has these two magic cards here. Both of them give them give her two additional points when rolling a dice. But still, when you're using magic, you always have to draw one cackle counter here as well. So let's, let's take the risk here, I guess. So we will move down here to the bridge of Lanker. Now we will be able to reveal the actual problem. And I really don't have a clue how you would translate this guy to English because it could mean everything basically. So it could be the swarm or it could be the dreamer. Maybe you can help me here. He has a quite tough difficulty as you can see. He has a base difficulty of 22 plus the two of the crisis token. So we have to beat 24 points and that's definitely something. But first of all, let's roll our dice and hope for a... mm, that's not too bad. So we are already up at seven. And I just did the math again and it's really tough to beat it, to be honest. So even though I would be able to spend three of my cards, which would give me two additional cackle counters, I still would have to roll a 12 afterwards. And this is kind of tough. Maybe this was a stupid idea at the very beginning or thinking of it. So I think I will run away. Right now this is perfectly fine. I can do that. I can run away to any of adjacent free location. So we go here to Margaret's hut and we don't have to suffer any penalty for failing this problem here. Let's see how Tiffany will do in this turn. First of all, we reveal our card and this will go to Margaret's hut. And if that sounds familiar to you, yes, that's where Anagramma has run away. And so we are not allowed to place a problem there. The good thing is we don't have to give one uh, or draw one of these crisis tokens. So we just have to draw an additional card. And this goes to the oak. And here we are lucky we are allowed to place this easy problem. And for Tiffany I would play it somewhat differently. I will play this card here and I will play it for its witch's symbol here. And this would allow me to move anywhere on the game board. So I will move here to the feverish patient up there, which should really be a problem. So we will roll our first two dice. Hope for the best. Okay, that's already a seven, so we are fine. We don't have to spend any additional cards here. So we will roll our second pair of dice. Perfect, no cackle symbol. So we managed or we dealt with this fever without any problem, so we crap it and try to increase our hand limit even more. This ends our movement, so we increased our hand limit again to five now. So, and here we draw these two cards. So this is one invisibility, she already has that special ability. And this 
gives us an additional movement. I was really hoping for the power of the three here because if you have three of them and showing three different witches, you can solve any one problem automatically. So this was already or again some kind of gambling here and I lost. Let's see where we have to place our next problem here. So we will draw this card again. This goes to the castle of Lanker and there we already or again have a problem as both of them are occupied. I think yeah we have to deal with that so we have to place one additional crisis token and I will place the crisis token on the easier problem here so bring this 9 to an 11 rather than the death here that would be a 14 and 14 can be pretty challenging but again we have to deal with the fever here so we draw the next card and this is the location where the sun is not shining and there we have the same problem it's also occupied by this death problem here again we have to place our next crisis token and on we move Let's draw the next one. This is the Dancer. The Dancers are also locked already by this broken arm here. Again, we have to place our next Crisis token and there are only four additional Crisis token left. So we really have to take care of them as soon as possible. But still we have to take care about the Fever and here we have the Tall Man and this time we are lucky. We are allowed to place this Fever token finally on the game board. Wow, that was really a tough turn here. Anagramma really have to deal with some of those crisis tokens. So she will use her S Karina card for her flying or witch's broom ability. This will allow us to move Anagramma to the castle of Lanker where we try to take care of this sick sheep here, which has an increased difficulty of 11 now. So let's roll our two dice. That's already 11, perfect. So we don't have to spend any cards. Still, we have to roll our second pair. That's perfect. That's an additional eight without any cackle symbols. So for once we can return this crisis token back to the reserve and we are allowed to take this easy problem into our player board or our player area. And as I want to increase my hand limit as well, we will move here to this space here and try to deal with this problem of 12. That's a 7. That's already pretty good. We still need huh, 5 more. So I think I'm tempted to play this Hadology token here. So this brings us now to eight already. So let's roll to two additional dice. And yeah, not a problem. We haven't, or we didn't need the card actually, but better safe than sorry. So we have taken care of death as well. So we also increased our hand limit to five. And here are our three cards. This is death. This would allow us to solve one death problem automatically. Here we can move again. And this one would allow us to draw two additional cards for one cackle token in return. Let's try to place our next problem token here. And again, we have to draw a card. And this is again, Margaret's hut. In this case, this is fine because there is nothing there at this point in time. So no additional crisis token for now. Perfect. Tiffany wants to deal with this crisis token up there and therefore she has to move one, two, three spaces. So she's not allowed to do that. So she will play this ferryman or whatever it is and this would allow her to move up to two additional spaces. So that's perfectly fine and we'll bring her one, two, three spaces to the dancers up there. So she has difficulty of 13 because of this token. So let's roll our dice. That's a seven. And a seven is pretty okay, I guess. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I will play one magic card just to be on the safe side. So this would allow us to increase two points to our die roll. So we are already at a nine. Therefore, we have to draw one cackle counters every time you're using this magic ability, but still we have to roll the dice again. Again, we, <laughs> okay, 
uh, we shouldn't do that basically uh, but still we, we, we went fine or everything went fine so we take this cackle token this card gets discarded the crisis token goes back to the reserve and we solved our next problem and for her second action, she will move one, two spaces to the oak and try to deal with the pregnancy again. It's difficulty of 10, but that's already an eight. I'm not spending any cards yet, so let's roll again. Perfect, that's an additional eight to 16. Not a problem for this pregnancy here. We solve this problem easy. And this would allow us to increase our hand size again by one so we have a hand limit of six now and this time we were really lucky this is our third the power of the three so we have three of them so we will definitely be able to take care of this problem as the power of the three solve any problem automatically isn't that nice Let's do one final round, I guess. So we will move back to Anagramma. She will check where to place the next problem. That's again the city of Lanka, which is not a problem. So we will move the death token on. Oh, let's put it on this space so it can be reached easily. And now we can take our two actions. And this time I really want to take care of this purple problem there. So I will move here to the city of Lanka to this space to see what's hidden below that one. That's Lacrimosa, the else tier. That's difficulty of 18, so definitely easier to handle with than the Swarmer, let's call him that way. Still, we have to roll a hell of a lot of points in order to get rid of her. We do have some cards on our hand, so I think we should be able to manage to deal with her. So let's roll her first two dice. Oh, that's 11, that's, that's perfect. Still, I think I will place, let me check. Yeah, I think I will play these two magic cards here. So this increases her die result by four. So then we are already at um, 15, yeah. Then we roll our second pair. We still, we have to draw two of those cackle counters. And not a problem at all. We have taken care of our first tough problem here. So we are allowed to grab this token. This time we have to place it down there. We have to draw two of our cackle counters because we used two magic cards. But I think this was definitely worth it. And then we can move back to the game board. And I think this time we will take care about this death problem here. Difficulty of 12, so let's roll two dice. That's already again a problem as we only rolled one of uh, three points and one of those is a cackle. So that's definitely only three points. So again, we have to draw one cackle counters. And I'm really tempted to just play this card here and this says you can solve one death problem automatically so this is not a magic token so we don't get any additional tokens here cackle tokens so we solved this problem here automatically perfect so we will draw our three cards uh, she has still a hand limit of five and then we can move over to tiffany who will use her witch's broom here to move down to this problem, the swarmer. And with a 24, she's not even there to try it. So she will play her three power of the three. So we have Margaret here, we have Granny Weatherwax and Nanny Ock. So these are three different witches which allow us to remove one problem and we will take care of this problem. This crisis token also goes back to the reserve, which is perfectly fine. Let's play our next problem first. This goes to black glass. Let me check where black glass is. And of course it's occupied, so we have to place one crisis counter there. Next location would be Schnitte. This is also occupied. And the next one would be something like Dalswil. And here we are lucky we are allowed to place this purple problem onto this location here. As her movement is blocked, she will use her witch's broom to move to this space to drink a cup of tea. This would allow her to remove up to three cackle tokens. She only has one. 
Good thing is that Anna Grandma is also allowed to remove two of her, so this is perfectly fine. So we have again four cackle tokens available in the reserve. Awesome. Last thing to do is to draw up to our hand limit. Oh, I forgot one. She has a hand limit of six now. So he is Agnes Smith. And again, this is a power of the three card and we can slowly build up an additional pool with her. Awesome. So I think I will end my playthrough here for today. This should give you a pretty good overview about how this game works. I already learned a lot in this playthrough, I have to admit, and hope to see you soon in one of my next playthroughs or in the next episode of this playthrough. And until then, bye-bye. <laughs>